I'm here in Skopje, the capital city of Macedonia. And behind me is Macedonia Place, or Plostat Macedonia, as it's known in Macedonia. And behind me is a monument to a warrior on a horse uh, who is believed to be Alexander the Great. Now, before, during and after the uh, colour revolution in Macedonia, um, most of these monuments uh, depicting Macedonian history, in particular the, the ancient history of Alexander the Great, Philip of Macedon, so forth and so forth, uh, were attacked with uh, paintballs uh, by people purporting to be anti-nationalists. But the interesting thing is uh, not one Albanian nationalist monument was uh, targeted um, during this colour revolution, either before, during and after. The colour revolution happened in 2016, but the lead up began around about 2015. And what sort of began as a rebellion against uh, alleged corruption then sort of spread to uh, the questioning of uh, the uh, existence of the uh, Macedonian state, uh, you know, and what uh, defines a Macedonian or even the concept of Macedonianness. But the interesting thing is if you go that way, um, maybe 500 metres, you'll go to uh, Skenderbeg Square, which is the, the Albanian quarter of this uh, city of Skopje. Uh, there are nationalist monuments and murals there. Uh, again, there have been no protests, uh, nothing, absolutely nothing. Um, I drove to Simnica, a small uh, village populated by Albanians. Uh, it's a village uh, between the city or town of Gostivar and Mavrovo National Park. It's a very isolated village, it's very hard to get to. But there is a monument there to a, uh, a figure known as Hassan Jem, or Jem Hassan, uh, who was a, uh, an Albanian nationalist who belonged to the Bale Kombetar. And they were uh, Nazi war collaborators. Uh, they believed in a greater Albania. And there's a monument to him in the uh, village square. And that monument has been there, uh, I believe, for at least 10 years, or, or maybe slightly less. But there have been absolutely no protests, no activists, have either, uh, you know, decided to, uh, you know, get together, jump on the bus and drive to the village and protest. It's only Macedonian monuments that have been targeted. Albanian nationalist monuments haven't been targeted. Um, the Serbian embassy here in the capital city of Macedonia, Skopje, hasn't been touched, even though many of the leading um, activists who, uh, you know, uh, protest against alleged Macedonian nationalism, which hasn't uh, attacked anyone in, in 2,000 years, um, these people are themselves of Serb background and they stubbornly refuse to protest outside the Serb embassy in Skopje. You know, we're talking about people like Borjan Jovanovski, Pavle Bogoevski, Branimir Jovanovic, even the uh, current defence minister, Radmila Šekerinska, who in 2010, would you believe, boasted openly about her Serbianness, yet she criticises Macedonians for, you know, asserting their Macedonianness, even though Macedonians themselves have been victims of colonialization. You know, they've you know, fallen under Serbian, Greek, Bulgar occupation. Um, during World War II, the Albanian nationalists, the Bale Kombetar, collaborated with the Italians and then the Germans in trying to establish a greater uh, Albania. Um, and, you know, the people that they ended up killing were mainly uh, Macedonians and, and even fellow Albanians who didn't want to live under a, a fascist state. But it's, but it's interesting that uh, only Macedonian monuments have been targeted. Albanian monuments haven't been touched. The Serb embassy uh, in here in, in the capital city hasn't been touched. No protests. We're, we're told repeatedly that there is Russian interference uh, via the Serb embassy. Uh, and again, nothing, absolutely nothing. Only Macedonian monuments. It's puzzling. It's a strange form of internationalism.